Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. If you are a rural Alaskan resident with an interest in preserving subsistence hunting, trapping, and fishing for future generations, and maintaining an open forum for public expressions, opinions, and concerns regarding subsistence, consider applying for one of the Federal Subsistence Regional Advisory Councils by Friday, January 29, 2016. More info at 1-800-478-1456 or email subsistence at fws.gov. The National Weather Service. Good Wednesday evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. It is December the 16th. As always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your local weather information. You can do that online at weather.gov slash Alaska. Call us on the weather info line at 800-472-0391. Listen to Marine VHF or your NOAA weather radio. Find us on Facebook at NWS Alaska. NWS Alaska is a good place to find us on Twitter as well using the hashtag AKWX. You can also join in the conversation with NWS Juno, NWS Anchorage, or NWS Fairbanks for more information that's a little bit closer to home. On YouTube, of course, we have our afternoon broadcast of our surface charts to give you a sneak peek at what we're going to talk about here in Alaska weather later in the afternoon. You can find that from NWS Anchorage or NWS Fairbanks as well. So a lot going on anytime. You can always find more weather information there. A couple things going on first in the upper Kuskokwim Valley. A dense fog advisory is in effect. That'll go until midnight. Look for some poor visibility there, obviously, below a quarter of a mile. That's expected to continue for at least another few hours as we go through the evening there. So uh, just uh, take care and don't run into any light poles or anything like that. Out across the central and western chain, we are gearing up for another wind event. It looks like ADAC and ATCA are now under a high wind watch that will go from about Thursday night into late Friday night. We're expecting winds there that have the potential to reach upwards of 60 miles an hour sustained with gusts that could reach upwards of 80 miles per hour. A watch means simply watch out. We don't have enough confidence yet and we're not close enough to the event to say there's a warning, but things are shaping up that we could see some wind develop there in that region. And again, that could reach upwards of 60 miles an hour sustained with gusts to 80. Now a little bit further out to the west from Kiska and out toward Attu and Shemi, of course, a high wind warning is now in effect and that'll go from about midnight Thursday until about three o'clock on Friday afternoon. In that region, we're expecting winds that could reach up to 65 miles an hour sustained, also from the south and west, with gusts upwards of 85 miles per hour again. So this warning, shaded in red for the western chain, will begin around Thursday at midnight and go until about Friday afternoon around 3 o'clock. So a lot going on out in the west once again as a new Pacific storm is expected to move into the western bearing. You'll see that here on the surface charts in just a minute. First, a look at the satellite picture across the Great Land and across the Haines uh, Highway region and Haines itself. A winter weather advisory is in effect, expecting three to seven inches of snow there. That'll start up early tomorrow and probably wind down as we head into uh, late Thursday evening. So it'll be kind of an intense burst of snow, as you'll see. But about three to seven inches is expected around the Haines region with that winter weather advisory in effect for tomorrow. Low pressure sitting out across the central Gulf and you can see the drier air sweeping into that and that's also pushing a lot of moisture right up against the Gulf, co Gulf Coast and replacing the drier air across southeastern Alaska today with more and more clouds. Not a whole lot of precipitation for most of the day. Across the Yukon Valley all the way from the Alcan border to the west coast you can see there's a lot of cold air there. That's that murky color shaping up there across the satellite picture. Most of the cloud cover was around Fairbanks to Dawson and south around Barrow. We saw more blowing snow and uh, probably poor visibility due to fog than anything else from points east from Barrow all the way to the west. Uh, maybe a snow shower or two from time to time today, but it didn't look like there was a whole lot actually falling from the sky. Out across the west coast, you can see a wave of low pressure working northward toward St. Lawrence Island. That's just one of many little vortices or kind of a spins that we see in the atmosphere right now that are working from south to north. That's still caught up in that general flow that took that larger storm north of the Bering Strait uh, in the last several days. And then out across the west, you can see the next band of cloud cover working in across the central and western chain. That well in advance of 
uh, the main circulation that's still coming up out of the North Pacific. So again, uh, some changes coming to the western chain. Here's a look at the weather chart and low pressure sitting south of Kodiak Island today kept some stronger winds mainly offshore. You can see that it did bring some rain to Kodiak Island itself. Most of the bands of rain were right around the northern coast with southeast mainly in the clear for uh, precipitation but clouds certainly were filling in. The occlusion will gradually work northward and pull in another area of low pressure from the Pacific Northwest. Meanwhile, high pressure sitting across the Alcan border at 1027 millibars and all this of course is working together trying to push more air into the vacuum that is low pressure sitting across the central and western gulf at this point. Here's the Bering Strait and low pressure. This is what's left of that first stronger Pacific storm that we had a few days ago and blowing snow across the north slope thanks to that zone of low pressure just north of the Brooks Range. And there's our circulation that we saw spinning on the satellite imagery moments ago. We did see some snow around the Alaska Peninsula as well as the eastern chain today around Dutch Harbor and Unalaska. And here's our first little hint of that next system coming in across the North Pacific and the Western Bering. The low is down to 985 millibars. It's expected to deepen pretty rapidly again as we head into tonight and tomorrow, down to 974 tonight, in fact, with periods of snow and rain and snow for the central and western chain across the Gulf. The low pressure is down to 964. We've got the occlusion banking up against Kodiak Island and across southeastern Alaska. And waves of low pressure rotating on the northern side of that uh, with pockets of rain and snow, especially for places like Haines and the Haines Highway and for the Chugach Range and Prince William Sound. Awful lot of dry air across uh, the lower and middle Yukon Valley and also uh, wind continuing for the Beaufort Seacoast. Now, not terribly strong winds, but enough to keep the snow blowing around from time to time. You'll see pockets of snow showers across the west coast and rain and snow showers for the central and eastern chain as well as the Alaska Peninsula still looking for an inch or two of snow. For Thursday, low pressure is starting to fill in a little bit more across the Gulf. You can see it's up to 969 now, so the higher the number goes, again, remember that's higher the pressure and that means we're probably going to see lesser amounts of wind, especially on the periphery of the storm. However, we are expecting that there will be some areas of chop and uh, probably turbulence across the coast, especially southeast and all the way around toward Prince William Sound, and maybe as far west as the Kenai Peninsula and Kodiak Island. Watch for periods of rain and rain mixed with snow across southeast. And, and again, Haynes is still looking at three to seven inches of snow with that winter weather advisory that will start up tomorrow and wind up in the evening hours. <coughs> Excuse me. A 945 millibar low is what we're expecting as we head into Thursday afternoon and probably by later in the day it'll go even lower than that. Uh, the latest forecast was taking it as low as about 941 I believe. As our front races across uh, the central and western bearing, it is going to bring some stronger winds to the Priblovs and St. Matthew Islands and expect the winds to be considerably stronger west of St. Matthew if you have friends fishing out there still. And across the central chain, watch for those winds to come up. Again, a high wind watch right now is what we have in place for ADAC and ATCA. Behind that, a high wind warning where winds could be as strong as uh, 65 miles an hour sustained with stronger gusts upwards of 85 miles. Now, out across the uh, west coast, we expect generally dry conditions for Thursday. There will be a, a pretty substantial round of dry air still hovering on the northern side of this low pressure system across the Gulf. And the ridge that's protecting the, the area in between both systems will gradually erode. And as we get into Friday, you can see that pretty much just goes away. Uh, the next wave of low pressure sitting south and west of Haida Gwaii is down to 987. That's what was sitting here across the central Gulf. That kind of gets kicked out of the way. Across Prince William Sound, pockets of light rain there, some snow for some of the higher terrain of the Kenai Peninsula and the Chugach. And then south and west, you're looking at snow showers developing around the Alaska Range. And then westward, that becomes a little more snowy across the YK Delta into Bristol Bay and the Alaska Peninsula, some areas of snow there. The wind becomes a little bit more westerly and strengthens there for many areas for the central and eastern chain as we get into Friday. Around the Pribilovs, snow is likely there, and that could extend eastward all the way up toward Nunavak Island. Drier winds coming off the continent will keep places like the Seward Peninsula and Nome fairly dry for Friday, but there will be some snow showers coming your way as waves of low pressure are moving from east to west, so probably won't escape the weekend without some snow. And again, the stronger winds from the south and east will push a lot of that moisture northward as well. Uh, the low pressure system should fill in fairly quickly, and this is not tracking the same way as the previous storm as well. You can see this one is a lot more of a southerly track and is not uh, angling for the Bering Strait as the current storm uh, certainly did. Here's a review of temperatures today. 
20s and 30s for most of southeast. We saw Sitka up to 37 degrees around the Dixon entrance and not a whole lot warmer. In fact, uh, temps there in the mid to upper 30s uh, south of the Dixon entrance all the way up to 40 around Haida Gwaii today. Haines and Skagway saw temps in the 20s and 30s, about the same for the capital city. Yakutat was 34. Cordova 36, uh, Valdez around 28 degrees, cooler in Anchorage today at 23, or as you head down to Homer, it was 32, Seward reported 34, Kodiak was around 39 degrees, 37 on the other end of town, and 11 below in Northway, one of the coldest spots in the state earlier today, three above in Fairbanks, it was 19 around Healy, and Denali National Park, zero in uh, Fort Greeley today, seven in Eagle, two below in Fort Yukon, 11 below for Arctic Village, another cold spot on her today, nine above for Anaktuvik Pass. And you'll notice most of the North Slope was still holding on to some of those milder temperatures, maybe not as warm as it was yesterday, but close to zero this time of the year is not too bad. Four below for Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse, one below in Kaktovik, five below in Wainwright, and down the uh, range there for uh, Point Hope and uh, Point Lay, you can see temperatures in the teens and 20s. Kotzebue Sound also saw temps in the teens and 20s today. Kivalina was 24. Shishmaref closer to 18. Kotzebue 25. Nome 18 degrees, about the same in Unalakleet. And McGrath holding on to double digits at 11 degrees today. A treat for you. 17 in Galena. Bethel was showing 10. Southwestern Alaska saw temps in the 20s and 30s with Nunavak Island at 27. 21 in St. Lawrence, upper 20s and lower 30s for the Pribilofs today with the Alaska Peninsula in the lower to mid 30s, 36 in Sand Point, 35 in Dutch Harbor in Alaska, and lower 30s for Adak, Atka, and Shemya this afternoon. Now, overnight low temps will hold on to readings in the upper 20s and lower 30s for southeast. You'll see temps stay below freezing for south central, including Prince William Sound. Kodiak Island about 35. Fairbanks looking at one and just one only. One for Eagle as well, seven below in Northway. 11 below for Arctic Village and 4 below in Barrow with Nome expecting temps around 18 tonight. Bethel is expecting temps down to about 12 with Bristol Bay near 20 degrees, 20s and 30s for the Alaska Peninsula with areas on the Pacific Coast a little bit milder like Sand Point and Cold Bay. Out across the west, temps should stay just below 30 degrees in St. Paul, 26 to start your day tomorrow, 32 for the daytime high. Most of southwest will stay in the 20s as you look at the Alaska Peninsula. Uh, most areas will be very close to freezing. A few places might climb just above it like uh, Sand Point and uh, False Pass. Around Kodiak Island, expect temperatures closer to 40 degrees tomorrow. Again, rain and snow possible in the region. 20s and 30s for south central. Southeast probably goes above freezing in many areas around Ketchikan, Metlakatla, Annette. Probably looking at lower 40s there, maybe even Cake as well. Uh, for Fairbanks, look for single-digit temps again tomorrow, but above zero, so milder for sure for you. Around Fort Yukon, zero degrees, four above in Barrow and Nome. Expect 13 degrees for a high temperature tomorrow. On to flying weather now. Expect IFR conditions to develop on either end of Kodiak Island. We'll see MVFR through a wide swath of the Gulf of Alaska as well as southeastern Alaska. And where the winds are strong and latching onto moisture, we're also going to see IFR conditions just outside of Prince William Sound to almost Yakutat or so. Most of that should say just offshore. Across the Alaska Range, going through some of the passes, you might run into MVFR there and over uh, the Fairbanks and Middle Tananaw area tomorrow. Also north of the Bering Strait, northwest coast, and into the Bering Sea. And then you can see where the frontal boundary is starting to interact with the moisture there with a wide area of IFR through the central chain and out across the west. Here's your pass conditions now. Anaktuvik and Adigan Pass expected to be VFR through your Thursday. As we get into Lake Clark and Merrill Pass, things look pretty good there. But the further north and east you go, you start to run into some areas of MVFR that could develop during the days you saw on the chart a minute ago. Windy Pass, we expect marginal conditions to develop in the region. Isabel Pass also expected to see a changeover from VFR to MVFR throughout the day. Mentasta Pass should see some improvements after a morning start with a better chance for some snow showers in the area. And Tanita Pass also expecting some snow showers possibly in the afternoon there, so watch for that to change. Portage Pass right now looks to be one of the worst spots to try and get through tomorrow, especially on the eastern side. IFR conditions are expected there in the afternoon. And Chilkoot and White Pass, as we said, with a winter weather advisory in place, there's a possibility that you're going to run into some snow in the region. MVFR conditions at least, probably looking at IFR at least some point during the afternoon. Freezing levels now, uh, we can see the warmer air is still trying to work some of that uh, heat northward toward Nunavak Island and north of the Pribilovs, and you can see the next wave of low pressure is already bringing in the heat to the western chain with levels up to four, even 8,000 feet. For southeastern Alaska, freezing levels stretch from about Sitka at 2,000 feet to the Dixon entrance around 4,000 feet. Everything else, of course, is sub-freezing for the winter time. 
Icing potential shows that there will be a lot of moisture wrapping around and the level seems to be about three to 4,000 feet before you start running into at least some occasional moderate there in some cases, probably lesser amounts of icing the further north you go into the Cook Inlet region. Also a pocket or two around the Eagle area, about 2,000 feet up, you'll find some isolated moderate there and then ahead of our next wave of low pressure above 4,000 feet to get into the occasional moderate for the central chain. The jet stream shows two main areas of low pressure, one of those driving the current weather in the Gulf with wind speeds on the west side of that at around 140 knots. And then west of the bearing, we see the next punch of atmospheric uh, power coming in at 175 knots. That's what's energizing that surface storm that's moving into the bearing in the next day or so. At 9,000 feet, our low pressure system has winds coming off the continent around 40 to 60 knots over Kodiak Island and through Cook Inlet, they slow down significantly. Across southeast, 15 to 20 knots from the south and east. Across the interior, winds are only around 15 to 20 knots. They're rotating on the northern side of that low pressure system. And winds are typically from south to north across the northwest and uh, northeastern parts of the North Slope, about 20 to 35, a little bit stronger over places like Kaktovik and Prudhoe Bay. Out across the southern bearing, winds are picking up there from 70 to 90 knots, generally due west, and then become a little more southerly out over the Pribilovs. At 3,000 feet, a similar story. A little bit faster winds, though, at 65 to 75 knots south and west of St. Matthew. Westerlies there for the central and western chain, up to 85 knots, in fact. And then we see slightly stronger winds across southwestern Alaska, about 20 knots there from the north and east. Interior winds also a little faster here around the Alaska range at 35 knots. And for southeastern Alaska, winds are going to pick up a little bit more here from about 20 to 50 knots as this rotates through. The winds, again, should start to increase as we get into tomorrow. That takes us on to turbulence, and as you would expect with high wind watches and warnings for the central and western chain, we are going to have an opportunity for some isolated severe, probably near most of the uh, chain tomorrow. Below 4,000 feet for the Privlovs, look for increasing opportunities for turbulence there, and look for occasional moderate across parts of the Kuskokoon Valley and into the uh, uh, upper Yukon Valley, as well as most of the Gulf Coast, thanks to low pressure sitting across the central part of the ocean there below 5,000 feet. That's a look at your aviation forecast. I'll be back with the rest of your marine weather and an update on the sea ice edge in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. Hello again, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. And joining us again, talking about the augmented reality sandbox, is Eric Stevens from GINA, the Geographic Information Network of Alaska. And he's actually talking about a project from EPSCOR, which is the Experimental Program to Stimulate Competitive Research. A lot of acronyms, but some really mm -hmm. fun stuff today, right, Eric? You bet. We've got a learning tool that is a tool that's fun to use, uh -huh. and it really has a, a relevance to actually daily lives of anyone who goes outside uh -huh. and sees uh, lumpy topography in Alaska. We've got yes. a lot of mountains and such. You know, when I was younger and go on your first hike in the hills, say, yeah. you're given, maybe you're in the Boy Scouts, or, or you get at the kiosk at, a, at the trailhead, a topographic map, a flat piece of paper yes. with all these lines on it, bullseyes, uh, long lines that curve back mm -hmm. on themselves, say, perhaps things that look like this. Mm -hmm. Um, a, a quadrangle or a topographic map. We've got here just to illustrate a couple of examples near Denali. Alaska okay. has so much Perfect topography, example. so many mountains. Yeah. And what are all these lines that we see? It can be mm -hmm. tough to know what this means the oh, first yeah. time you look at it. What we've got, all these lines represent lines of where the, uh, the elevation of the topography goes through a certain level above sea level, say, mm -hmm. that this line represents where the mountains have gone from below 1,000 feet mean sea level up through a thousand feet and above. That's your thousand foot contour. And when the mountain keeps going up, mm -hmm. you're up to 1200 feet, 1400 feet, and so on. And that's how you get this little bullseye around, uh, around the peak of a mountain. Kind of makes layered slices, right? Kind of like layered slices. Okay. Nice way yeah. to look yeah. at that. And when you see those, the lines are closer together, you're, you're going up more steeply. Okay. If the mountain rises more slowly, it takes you longer in horizontal space to go through those different vertical increments. So that is that, really hard to visualize. Right. We're, Imagine you're looking at a 2D piece of paper, two-dimensional yeah. piece of paper, but you're trying to understand what it, the three-dimensional world looks yeah. like. Yeah. Well, enter the help. augmented reality I like sandbox. It. Okay. Yes, what is that? Yeah. It is right here. We have the sandbox with us today, Sandbox 2.0, portable version. Sweet. Built up at University of Alaska Fairbanks. 
And we've got a couple of folks helping out today. Yeah, uh, let's see, Alana Vilaji, and she's a uh, mechanical engineering student from the University of Alaska Fairbanks. If you want to give us a thumbs up there, Alana, thanks for helping us out today. And Courtney Brees, she's the outreach coordinator from EPSCOR, also helping us out today. Thanks, Courtney. And this tool here has a Microsoft Connect um, to sense the level of sand in this sandbox, oh, wow. and then the yeah. Connect feeds its information into a computer that then sends a signal to a projector okay. to draw the appropriate topographic lines on this topography. The fun thing about this, as we can see here, wow, that. is that the sandbox and its Connect and its projector, they all work as a team. Hmm. So here we've got a mountain in the middle of the, of the uh, sandbox. What if we uh, took down the mountain to some degree Watch as the uh, the software responds and redraws the topography. Mm, kind of a caldera forming there. There you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what's fun about the sandbox too is it knows that uh, gravity flows downhill, okay. and we've got some water that's actually down in the lowest elevations. And what's happening now is we're making it rain a little bit. We'll fill up rain oh, wow. into that uh, elevated lake bed, that caldera, as you uh -huh. said. And so now water is pooled up there. And if what if you gouged out an outlet uh -oh. channel? Glacial dam release. There you go. The water flows out. What we're seeing here is a tool mm. that allows people to touch and connect, uh, Microsoft Connect, right. RRR, yeah. um, to connect two-dimensional topographic maps like what we have here, these flat things on a, pe wow. on a piece of paper, to the real three-dimensional world. I mm -hmm. think this sandbox, it's sandbox's real particular application as a learning tool to young people is what does a two-dimensional map mean when it's trying to represent the three-dimensional world? Right. This sandbox is kind of both at once. It's actually three-dimensional, uh -huh. a lumpy topography there, the sand, but it's got these lines drawn on the three-dimensional sand that would be on a two-dimensional right. piece right. of paper. Wow, that, I mean, that, that is a huge leap from the learning that we experienced when we were younger to how, mm -hmm. how children and even adults are visualizing in, in these new forms of technology it allows that to kind of reshape their thinking and visualize this in a, in a very useful and absolutely hands-on way. That is, it's, it's amazing. It's a hands-on tool. And it's hard for me to sit here and not go play with that. <laughs> well, that's what happened at Gina, um, up at the University of Alaska in Fairbanks, when the first model was being made, the prototype with right. plywood and such, we had professional adult <laughs> professor types had heard about this and they yeah. came by because they wanted to see how it worked. Okay. And, and everyone becomes uh, that idealistic, wonder-filled youngster. Sure. And, and you, you just can't help but play with that and to see how it reacts in time and, and um, right. it, it's a dynamic learning tool. And it Dynamic. responds. That's exactly. That's exactly mm -hmm. the word. Yeah. And you know, you wonder okay. what applicabilities beyond a teaching right. tool for Where topography it can it have? You can see how in Alaska we have inundation mapping is an okay. issue. If you had water coastal slosh, mm -hmm. slosh inland, say in a coastal flooding event right. on the western coast of Alaska or mm -hmm. the Arctic coast, you could see this. The concept is illustrated here um, as an introductory learning method. I think this is a potentially good outreach tool for all of us in Alaska. Okay, so not only just a topographical sense, a, a mapping sense, maybe something that leads into understanding of how geographic information systems work, GIS, but mm -hmm. also geology, if we wanted to get into kind of the formations and the bigger land masses and, and the representation of the 2D map, uh, we could go into hydrology, uh, which is uh, very important in Alaska, of course. Um, and even just understanding the weather sense, mounding up a big pile of sand could be that Arctic high pressure system sitting on top of Fairbanks and the voids mm -hmm. would be low pressure systems. This can go a lot of different directions. Mm -hmm. Yes, wow. exactly. It's uh, not just landforms, but pressure has contours of high pressure and low pressure. And I wish I had had this kind of a learning tool no when I was taking kidding. Meteorology 101 back 25 years oh, ago. Wow. It would have been helpful, I think. Probably would have gotten a better grade, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for coming by, Eric and Alana and Courtney. Thank you so much for your help there in the sandbox. We are going to play in the sandbox a little bit more coming up tomorrow on our next edition of Alaska Weather Facts. We hope you join us for that. In the meantime, make sure you go to alaska.edu slash E-P-S-C-O-R. That's alaska.edu. EPSCOR to learn more information about what we're doing with this augmented reality sandbox around Alaska. We'll see you next time on Alaska Weather Facts.
On to your marine charts in southeast, winds are coming in from the south and east tomorrow, 30 to 40 knots in most areas. Northerlies around the Lynn Canal at 20 knots with four foot seas. Expect higher gusts in these regions. Winds will diminish by Friday with northerlies coming down from the Lynn Canal and all the way past Juneau. Southeasterlies in the Clarence Strait up to 25 knots with five foot seas and anywhere from 12 to 19 foot seas on the outer coast, 20 to 25 knots there. For south central, look for strong northerly winds coming down Cook Inlet. Storm force winds, in fact, in some areas, 40 to 50 knots around the Barrens, 45 knots outside of Prince William Sound with higher gusts there and seas to 26 feet. By Friday, winds diminish with a turn to the south and east. Easterlies inside of Prince William Sound, northeasterlies inside of Cook Inlet, and south and easterlies coming across the Barrens around Kodiak Island, 30 knots on the eastern side with 14-foot seas for Friday. For the Alaska Peninsula, northwesterlies will dominate with 45 to 50 knots from Castle Cape all the way out toward King Cove and Falls Pass. Look for seas from 15 to 20 there on Thursday. Those diminish with a southwesterly turn 30 to 40 on the uh, Pacific Coast and 30 to 35 across Bristol Bay and west down the Bering Strait. And as you head out across the central and western chain, storm force winds are expected there with higher gusts. Again, high wind watch for the central chain as we head into Thursday. High wind warnings begin midnight Thursday across the western Aleutians there with 50 knot winds and 27 to 29 foot seas. By Friday, the westerlies kick in 50 to 55 knots for the central Aleutians there, 45 knots around on Alaska and Dutch Harbor, 30 to 35 foot seas there for the Pacific Coast, and 30 to 37 foot seas across most of the Bering Sea coast for Friday. For the west coast, look for uh, easterlies light across St. Lawrence Island with ice cover now. South southeasterlies for the Pribilovs, 35 knots with a 9-foot sea, and winds will pick up west of St. Matthew as we head into Friday. Look for an easterly wind at 45 knots with 22-foot seas there. Southwesterlies for the Pribilovs at 22, and southeasterlies outside of Kuskokwim Bay. For the no north slope, look for easterlies around the Beaufort Sea Coast, 15 to 20 over the ice, and south and southwesterlies across the Chukchi Sea Coast, 15 to 25. For Friday, easterlies across the Beaufort Sea Coast, with northeasterlies coming down the west, uh, 10 to 25 there again over the ice as we head into Friday. Recapping your weather quickly tonight, low pressures across the Gulf at 964. Look for strong winds at times around the coastal areas with periods of rain and snow and a winter weather advisory for the Haines area and the Haines Highway. Looking for that to start up tomorrow with 3 to 7 inches wrapping up by the evening hours. A storm will build into the west and the high wind watch is posted for the central chain with a high wind warning for the western Aleutians that begins late tomorrow. Thanks for watching Alaska Weather. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Find a living in fisheries. The UAS Fisheries Technology Program offers online study from anywhere in Alaska, plus labs and workshops in many Alaska towns. It's most likely a chum. Find your living without leaving where you are. Fisheries Technology from UAS.